insurance companies supporting the chair stewardship of finance, dear president, dear chairholder, dear dean of the faculty of law and criminology, dear colleagues, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. It is both an honor and a privilege to be able to introduce the chair stewardship of finance. This chair, of which today we will witness the inaugural les lesson, is the result of a combined effort of the Brussels universities, VUB and ULB, in cooperation with the Visalius College and supported by six insurance companies active in Belgium, the names of which are uh, on the blackboard. The idea of this chair arose some months ago and already shortly after a national brainstorming, which was presided by the rector of our university himself, a task force composed of members of several faculties of our university and of its sister university, the ULB, went to work. After months of intense preparation, it is not without a certain pride that I stand here today to formally announce the start of the chair stewardship of finance. Myself being an academic active in the field of law, it has been my growing conviction that we live in a world driven by ideas and thoughts and to, to a large extent even a struggle of such ideas and thoughts. At each moment in time, existing legal systems and rules are clearly, be it not temporarily, the result of such a struggle of ideas, continuously subject to changes and further evolutions. As far as a lawyer is in the position of making any statements regarding the academic field of economics, the same truth seems to apply as regard economic systems and the way they are organized. The corrected, or so to say, social free market, which prevails in most European countries, presents a clear illustration of this truth. Moreover, it is somewhat surprising to find out to what large extent both the organization of this social free market, as the way it is influenced by all types of regulation, finds its roots in the works of philosophers and thinkers who lived in the past and whose thoughts still help shape the present-day economic and legal reality in which we all live and function. This may be illustrated by referring to two of the great thinkers of the past whose ideas clearly helped shape economic reality, one in past history and the other up to the present day. This first philosopher so, was Aristotle, one of the great philosophers of ancient history who lived from 384 until 322 before Christ. One of his teachings held that labor far more than capital should be economically rewarded. Together with certain sayings of the New Testament, this insight of Aristotle later in history inspired Christian philosophers to work out a so-called prohibition of charging interest when renting out money. This, in its own turn, became the leading principle of finance and financial law throughout the Middle Ages and was only in recent history completely abandoned as a rule of law. It is needless to say to what extent such a principle has influenced economic and financial development in the, this long period of Western history. The second of these philosophers, it need not to surprise, is of course Adam Smith, who lived from 1723 until 1790. His books are without doubt one of the leading ideal forces behind the development of both the free market and capitalism. His belief system, arguing that by allowing each individual to freely realize his or her self-interests, the greatest general welfare will occur, still lies at the basis of most present-day economic systems of our world. While several corrections to the raw version of the theories of Adam Smith have been worked out throughout the last two centuries, in recent years the underlying principle of this philosophical system themselves have become more and more subject to criticism by modern-day thinkers. Mankind's experience over more than two centuries of capitalism clearly has shown 
that the application of those ideas is a long way from confirming their forecast. As has been known for decades already, in view of the North-South division, it appears that only a relatively small proportion of the world's population has prospered under capitalism at the expense of abject poverty for the rest of mankind. More recently, it has emerged that even in Western countries, capitalistic processes have at the same time caused huge injustice, for example, making a small group of people increasingly richer while mass poverty blooms for the rest of the population. While on the other hand, these processes also have led uh, the world in the development of a great uh, group of innovations in technology, medicine, communication, and so on. Added to these insights, or it goes without saying, the events on the financial and monetary markets of the last years, generally known as the financial crisis. Although most of the turbulence caused by these recent financial crises is to be attributed to processes that developed over decades, it has contributed to an increased modern day awareness of the extent to which the financial world may be malfunctioning at its deepest roots. Therefore, the organizers of the chair of stewardship for finance deemed it high time to rethink the underlying processes steering the world economy. Such has been the main reason why the chair of stewardship of finance has been its first outward manifestation takes the form of a cycles of lectures, which will take place in the next five years at the Freie Universiteit in Brussel. The inaugural lecture of today will be followed by a cycle of 13 further lectures examining how various economic processes and certain excesses to which they have led relate to the answers given to ethical questions by moral philosophers and other thinkers past and present. The cycle of lectures calls on the services of the leading anthropologist and moral philosopher Paul Jourdion, who has been among those instrumental in encouraging the renewed interest in the subject today, and who already has numerous publications to his credit in that field. A second aspect of the chair will comprise detailed doctoral research to be launched during the chair's second the inaugural lesson of today will start with the projection of a short film, clearly demonstrating the necessity of rethinking the stakes at play. Thereafter, Dr. Paul de Knock will take the floor to further explain how the chair fits within the overall academic policy of the Vrije Universiteit Brussel 